Ed Husick this week became our first Muslim frontbencher and swore his oath as a parliamentary secretary on a Quran. No big deal, but the usual brainless internet trolls posted anti-Muslim insults on Husick's Facebook site. Husick's response showed class. He refused to let a few idiots define the rest of us. There are people definitely uh, that are extreme within uh, my faith and there are people that are extreme outside it. Um, and they will always try to seek ways in which to divide people. Ed Husick joins me now. Ed, we've had a culture of taking offence for political purposes these last few years, to take offence to make a point. Why didn't you play the victim? Because I thought it was important. Uh, this issue has been um, such a difficult one for communities post 9-11 and this should be above politics. We need to find ways to get people working together. So from my point of view I saw it as natural. You know, this was something different, something new for people and uh, people had seen terrible things uh, that had been done uh, invoking the name of my faith in, term of, uh, in terms of Islam and, you know, will uh, naturally wonder uh, well, you know, what is this about and, uh, and why is this person doing this and does it fit within, you know, Australian society? And I actually do think that it does because it shows the maturity and also the, the fact that as a community we just basically say if you're going to have a go and you're going to work with people then we'll give you a go. For three years, without wanting to get too political, we've had Labor play the politics of offence, right? I am offended about sexism. I am offended about some restaurateur stupid sexist menu. You haven't done that. Now, is that because you aren't comfortable with the way, you know, we've had that politics of offence taken over the last few years? No, it was a very personal decision on my part. I'm not going to... Uh, you know, paper it over. If uh, people have asked me how I've reacted to it at a personal level, uh, I have to say, um, if you ever have your uh, love of your country questioned, um, you know, you'll uh, understand what I went through this year. That this country has been uh, phenomenally great to my family, and I took an oath to uphold the Commonwealth, its uh, protect its people, and its. Uh, and its laws, observe its laws. And, um, but what about me, the last uh, three years, suggest... Ed? I mean, like I say, your reaction well, was different. The last three years of taking offence at sexist stuff, for example, um, do you think that was a mistake? Should it have been like you've done, rising above it? No, I'm not going to... Uh, I answered at a deeply personal level. The question, that, the answer and the response that you played earlier uh, was one that was uh, driven from a personal perspective. I wasn't thinking of three years. I was thinking of, uh, in particular, the fact that I respected the fact that people have different opinions and that you've always got to find ways to, to work with people. Ed, uh, you are now Parliamentary Secretary to Kevin Rudd uh, and you agitate, obviously, for him to uh, return. Can you tell me that Kevin Rudd, who gave us the home insulation debacle, uh, the Queensland coroner this week uh, attacked, the Kevin Rudd who scrapped the border laws that stopped the boats, how can we, the rest of us, be sure he's changed? Well, uh, look, you know, time will, uh, uh, in effect, answer your question, but from my own perspective, uh, I've always said, and having, uh, uh, you know, been friends with Kevin for many years, you know, you can't uh, go through the significant uh, public events that he went through in terms of, uh, you know, not, you know, being Prime Minister and going through all that. You can't not go through events like that and not grow and learn. And so, you know, my personal belief is that um, Kevin has gone through that, epi uh, through that period of his life and has grown. But, you know, the test is, to, the test is for people to see. And I think already te yeah, Kevin has started to, to demonstrate that uh, in the way that he won't, you know, want to rush, re you know, sort of uh, results or decisions. He'll want to take the, the right course of action, consult widely with people and... Uh, and demonstrate also, too, a more positive approach uh, to the way that politics uh, should be conducted in this country. Ed, well, can you tell me, uh, what's your new policy on the carbon tax? Will it stay or go? And what's your new policy on the deficit? Will it stay at 18 billion or, or increase? Well, again, you've seen that uh, we do, uh, you know, basically want to consider what the options are uh, for us on, well, in particular, the approach we take on carbon pricing. Do we move earlier to ETS or or not, how do we give effect to that? I mean, these things need to be considered and they shouldn't be rushed. And I go back to my earlier 
response to your question um, about you know whether or not the PM's changed and and say to you that uh, you know he is taking the time and taking the soundings and will make the policy based on what's right and but what can be done. But the point is, the point is you don't know. In terms of the point is you, as a as a friend of his, don't even know what his policies are. You just got a no, guy with a smile and a shoe shine. No, well, I haven't shined my shoes this morning. I'm really sorry <laughs> that I've let you down. No blue but, tie. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> it's Sunday. I don't know what the deal is with ties anyway. <laughs> um, uh, but, but the point I would make is that, um, yeah, I don't have the answers. Absolutely. You know why? Because we're taking the time to work our way through it. We're not going to make these big decisions by press release. We're going to make sure that things stack up and then we'll take a policy that's thorough to the, to the, uh, to the electorate. In terms of your question about deficit, I didn't want to be, I didn't want people to say, oh, he's ducked that. Mm -hmm. um, that. That issue too needs to be worked through because we're in a difficult global environment, as we've said, where the money ain't there because companies aren't making the profits that they were, particularly at a global level. And so, um, you know, we need to be able to make sure that we, uh, in terms of our spending decisions, uh, take into account that. So, again, that's something else that needs to be worked through. Ed Husick, thank you so much for joining me. Good on you. Coming up, Kevin Rudd challenges Tony Abbott to a debate on policies, but what policies does he have?